Demon octopus. Awesome. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> All hail the Demon Octopus. Suitable Flesh is a Shutter original directed by Joe Lynch, who's on various television shows and movies like Everly and Mayhem. Check out his IMDb page for the full list of his work. And written by Dennis Paoli, who's done Reanimator, From Beyond, more on that here in a bit, Ghoulies 2, Electric Gulaloo, Castle Freak, and Dagon, which was a daggone great time. One of the best Lovecraftian-inspired movies of the last 25 or so years. That came out in 2001 or 2? I saw it a while ago, and I remember liking it, even though it does take a bit to get into. Dagon is pretty goddamn good, and I encourage you guys to check that out after you check out Suitable Flesh. But how great is Suitable Flesh? Well, it is based on the work of H.P. Lovecraft. If you're expecting something as bonkers and ridiculous as Color Out of Space, maybe you'll be a bit disappointed. <clears throat> if you liked Reanimator from Beyond, you're going to get kind of, you know, the same vein of stuff here. Maybe not quite as bonkers, but enough of a, you know, enough of a series of bonkers moments that you'll be able to maybe enjoy it. it depend, your mileage may vary depending. So speaking of From Beyond, Barbara Crampton is in this as Dr. Danielle Upton, who is the friend of Dr. Elizabeth Derby, played by Heather Graham. Heather Graham is going to be 54 in January and looks to be in her late 20s still. So, incredible genetics there. God, there's, there, she looks absolutely great. Barbara Crampton is 64, and this does not compute to me, looks to be in her mid-30s. Also, remember the guy that was in That Thing You Do and then was the killer in the Unnecessary Prom Night remake? Yeah, he's in this. He, he's in this as Heather Graham's husband. He doesn't really get much to do. Uh, Bruce Davison is in this, uh, not given all that much to do either. And also, Judah Lewis plays uh, Aza, who is a young man that comes to Heather Graham, who's a psychiatrist, and says, somebody is trying to take over my body. I can't listen to this. And then weird stuff starts to happen. And it turns out this psychiatrist gets locked into more than she ever could have possibly imagined. And must try to find a way to solve this mystery before she is totally history. Suitable flesh tales. Woohoo. So yeah, Lovecrafting inspired. You're going to get a lot of weird camera tricks. You're going to get... Um, some good horror comedy. This tries to invoke the 80s feel down to the synth score and the stupid characters. And there are some moments actually that do work. There are some special effects that don't work. I don't know if that is because of the small budget or they were trying to go back to the 80s a little bit too literally. There were some nice gore scenes. And a couple where I'm like, oh boy, geez, that's just straight out of the Italian playbook with how red that blood is. <laughs> but some good moments, especially some good moments towards the end. Um, again, Fine for what it is. I'm not going to necessarily say it's great. It's definitely not one of the worst offerings that I've seen either from Shudder or this year as far as horror. But I was more I wasn't really scared by it. I was like, okay, I know where this is going to go. This is going to happen. Like there's this overall sense of dread. Not like in when Evil Lurks, which is a tremendous Shudder original. Watch it and then check out my review. I actually got to see that fortunately in theaters before. It dropped on Shutter, and this is currently on Amazon for six to seven dollars, depending on the tax brackets in your particular state. I just decided to rent it because why not? And parts of this movie had, you know, a couple of guys, you know, getting to nail Heather Graham, who looks great. Who would want to do that? Any red-blooded human being? Look at her. Just look at her. Look at her. Same with Barbara Crampton. I mean, they both look. They both look incredible. Great. Again, great genetics. Movie's fine. Um, it has some issues, like the stupidity of some characters, and the fact that the story is very obvious from the beginning because of how they started. I think if they hadn't started it the way they did, it might add a little bit more mystery. But then again, if you know the H.P. Lovecraft stories, you're probably not going to be very surprised at all. So I'm going to get into spoilers just so you know. It's not. It's definitely not bad. Compared to some Shutter originals that I've seen, like Lockdown Tower or others, this one was certainly better. But you know, you could wait for it to drop on Shutter, or you could throw a few bucks on Amazon or whatever streaming service you use to watch these movies and support the actors because now the writer strike is over and the actor strike is over for three years. So we get to see how many projects get turned out or studios get greedy about the AI again. 
That being said, I am going to get into spoilers. That's your warning right there. Heather Graham, Barbara Crampton, shut up and take my money. They look great. Three, two, one, and spoilers. So, <laughs> we start in the beginning, because there was rap, as our Lord and Savior Dr. Dre once said, and they're in Arkham, Massachusetts, at an asylum. Yeah, I see what you did there. Is Arkham, Massachusetts actually a legit place? It probably is. I've only been to Massachusetts once, and I went to Boston, a few boroughs, and then I went to... <laughs> I think they're called boroughs there. And I then also went to Connecticut. So that being said, um, they're, you know, they're doing, a, you know, they're basically coming, you know, from the reanimator. They, they did a few reanimator-like things with the coroner looking over the body and eating <laughs> and doing stuff. And not that that was only in reanimator. But... There is a body that Heather Graham is saying you got to burn the body if if it hap if he does it again it's forever. Basically, what happens is <clears throat> there's an entity that if it possesses you once it's fine it, it's not great. Second time it hurts a little more. Third time it's forever. Okay. <clears throat> so Aza comes up and you know comes to her office. You know uh, Elizabeth Derby Derby Bole Bole. And says, he's trying to get inside me, and it's it's my dad. It's my dad. He's trying to get inside my head. I feel like I'm not me. And then he has a possession moment. How do you feel? Like shit. <laughs> and the 80s synth feel of the music was decent. I mean, I think Totally Killer did it better, to be perfectly honest. Also, they had more licensed music. But... <sighs> Yeah, um, Bruce Davison is in this briefly. <clears throat> he has a lot of medical issues. He has a demonology book. He ends up cutting Heather Graham's ham with a knife that is straight out of the Fairyman's playbook. Um, the Bad Fairyman movie that I, or Fairyman inspired movie that had John Reese Davies in it, believe it or not. It's been a lot of weird shit. I saw it on sci fi a while ago. Elizabeth is trying to do her best to have a home life with her husband but also has this weird obsession with this student, or this student, this patient. And again, there are scenes where getting to nail Heather Cram. Again, who would not want to do that? So she manages to stop um, Asa from killing his dad, but he wants to kill him because you need to, because burn, you know, you got to cut out the brain, you got to burn the body. Why do you got to cut out the brain? Because you got to cut out the brain, because movie. And, well, then get, he gets taken over. The devil makes him do it. Oh, great, The Conjuring 3 is back. And then there are, you know, shots in the Lovecraftian book. Lord Cthulhu, all hail Lord Cthulhu. There are worse entities to worship. So at least Cthulhu seems legit. Giant sea-based creature. A lot to read up on. Look up, look up Cthulhu and you might understand. So... The house burns down because her and um, Bruce Davison get in a fight because Ace's uh, soul is in him. The house burns down, and now, yeah, he, he dies. The cops are questioning all this. And right before the house burns down is when he, when, you know, Asa, as possessed, nails her on the desk. Which, good God, that would be, that would be heavenly. Um, look, look at the other crime. Why, why, why do you not want to? Okay, maybe I'll, maybe I'll just, you know, stop saying that. Shut up. But the cops then question her. Um, the woman to play is Officer Huskley, uh, Giovanni Cruz, I believe. She's attractive. I wouldn't mind seeing her in more stuff. I've seen her in other stuff before, but may need to check out more of her movies. And that is right after, um... That is right after um, Heather Graham, you know, right after Heather Graham is not doing all that well. She comes home. Good God, Heather looks incredible. Um, Asa does more for you know foreign language stuff and over over the phone and causes a possession. I guess you can just phone in your demonic possession notes right there. At one point, um, shortly after that. Heather Graham's possessed. She chokes out her husband while fucking him. There are, again, worse ways to go. And then, then it just dissolves where Danny, you know, um, you know Bar uh, Barbara Crampton's character is trying to be convinced by, you know, 
Asa, who actually has who actually has Elizabeth's body or Beth's body or soul in her or in him rather. See, too many pronouns, pal. Sorry, Vince McMahon. And that's convinced all that and then it just gets to the point where basically Asa ends up getting trying to get at, you know, Elizabeth gets gets hypnotized because earlier um, Elizabeth had hypnotized a guy and then gone out to talk to Asa. This is before all this shit really happened. And left him in a goddamn trance. So managed to trance him just long enough and then <clears throat> tried to stab him. And then managed to push his body out the goddamn window. Runs him over. And the body goes to the goddamn morgue. <clears throat> and there's also a psychiatric hospital there while this body is being autopsied. Whatever. Um, that, that doesn't seem safe, but fine. State funding. And what ends up basically happening from there is that's, that brings us forward to Heather Graham explaining to Barbara Crampton all the stuff that's happening. Well, Aza manages to drag his body away. And that's right after more possession stuff happens. So now Heather Graham's totally fucked. Her and Barbara Crampton get in a fight. Barbara Crampton gets possessed. And then Heather Graham ends up locked up while Barbara Crampton is basically all possessed and doing and just taking over the whole goddamn thing because this demon is just continuing to do this stuff. And I know it sounds like I'm down on the movie, but no, I just like to crumple up notes. It's kind of fun. The, this was this was decent. It's not great. I'm going to give it a B for what it accomplished in a positive way. But there were some issues. <clears throat> Pacing, not being scary. It's like the biggest indictment against a horror movie. <clears throat> but for halfway decent story building, even if it was very obvious where I was going, and giving it a B. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Rithlin. I'll see you soon.